Okay, you've done your homework, you've watched the videos, you've done the reading. You've decided it's time to buy my first 3D printer. So, how do you choose? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. My name is Rem, welcome to the Maker Shed. Let's get started. When it comes to choosing your first machine, a handful of things to keep in mind are going to be budget, machine specs, such as features, build volume, overall footprint, reviews, and community. These are all the things that I look into when I purchase a new machine. Starting with budget, what exactly do I mean? I'm not just talking about the price of the machine itself. There are other things that are going to go into it. Now, for simplicity's sake, in this video, we're just going to be talking about filament-based printers, but a lot of these things do transfer over to resin-based printers as well. Now, when it comes to buying your first machine, you need to take into account the price of the actual machine itself. That is going to be your biggest upfront cost in most cases, unless you buy a pallet of filament. Which, speaking of, that is another cost that you have to take into account. And lastly, is going to be your tools. Most of the time, the only thing that you're going to need for your 3D printer tool-wise are going to be a good set of metric Allen keys. So I personally really enjoy a nice ratcheting screwdriver like my LTT screwdriver. You don't have to spend that much money. You can buy a really nice set of ball and Allen keys from Amazon. When it comes to filament, I don't recommend cheaping out. Personally, most of my projects these days, I'm using Polymaker. I love the filament, I love the company, they have a great presence in the community, and I've never been let down by them. The machines that I have, all five filament-based machines, just chew through Polymaker like it's nobody's business. The prints always turn out fantastic. So the next thing that we want to look at is going to be the overall feature set. What does this machine offer and why is it appealing? When I was looking into adding a new printer to my lineup, I was really interested in the Creality Ender 3 S1. Creality has been around for a long time. The Ender 3 is one of the most famous print platforms there is. And the Ender 3 S1 is a culmination of a lot of the features that a lot of us in the community put on our machines. You get a filament runout sensor, you get a really nice dual drive, direct drive, hot end extruder combination, automatic bed leveling from the CR touch right here, and you get a removable magnetic flex plate. These types of build plates, not this one specifically, I don't really care for the texture on it. I would have rather them used a more traditional PAI, but these types of flex plates are great. They are so much easier to remove prints from the glass because you can just flex it one direction, two direction, and your prints fall right off. Which means once you've done that and you've peeled your brims, skirts, and any excess, slaps back on and you are back off to the races. You're ready to start printing again. So when I'm shopping for a machine, I'm looking for, do I like the extruder? Do I like the hot end? Does the machine have any other perks like automatic bed leveling where the machine will actually go around and probe different points on the bed to generate a mesh? Automatic bed leveling is a bit of a misnomer. Most machines are not actually leveling the bed, but it's generating a mesh where the print head will move up and down just slightly to account for any warps and deviations. Do you get a filament runout sensor that lets you know when you run out of filament midprint? These are amazing, especially if you go with a larger machine, something like the Artillery Sidewinder X2. What we're going to do is we're actually going to dive into the computer and we're going to do some machine browsing and take a look and see where am I getting this information when I'm looking for a machine. Okay, so we are taking a look at some of the things that I use when I'm shopping for 3D printers. One of the first things that I'll do is open up Amazon. 
I personally try to purchase all of my machines through Amazon because the return policy is really easy to work with. If there's something wrong and I don't like the machine or don't want to keep it for whatever reason. Chances are, if you are new to shopping for machines, you're generically punching in the term 3D printer into Amazon and you're scrolling through and you're scrolling through and you're seeing all of these different machines, but maybe you don't know necessarily exactly what they are. A couple of pointers that I have are look out for anything that is way too cheap, way too good to be true. Sometimes you will see a deal where there will be like a $99 machine and that's really cool if it's something like an Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2 on sale, but a lot of these machines that you'll see are just junk. You'll see a really itty bitty machine that can't print anything bigger than my camera lens and you kind of want to avoid that. Chances are you're not going to have a great user experience with that machine and it might not be super encouraging for continuing to shop for machines. But as you're scrolling through, just generically browsing, looking and seeing what is available, you're going to definitely see the Ender 3 everywhere. Uh, a lot of us started with those machines and they're fantastic. Now something like this, uh, this Antina Tina 2S, looks like a pretty neat little machine with some Wi-Fi features, but that's a really small, really tight build volume. And it might not be something super great. It might be more of a toy type printer, really aimed at little kids, which not necessarily a super cool toy for a kid. There's a lot of moving pieces. There's hot parts that you can easily burn yourself on. So I'd maybe stay away from those. What we're going to look at is I've kind of decided, okay, I'm in the market for an artillery Sidewinder X2. So I did a search for the X2 and we're seeing a lot of different listings, which is awesome. We see some spare parts that are available. Very good to see that. Um, we're seeing some other machines. We're seeing some other features and none of this is exactly what we're looking for but we decided we want to take a look at the Artillery X2. So we see these two top listings right here. This one is $398.65, this one's $469.99, and there's a $70 coupon available, which is really cool. As we click on this listing, this name is super long. It is a ridiculously, ridiculously long name. They're trying to cram all of the buzzwords, all of the features that they can into it. You don't have to do that. We know what we're looking for or have an idea. So as we scroll down, knowing what we can expect from browsing through Amazon, we're going to see the full about section like this printer has an AC heated bed, so it's going to heat up pretty quickly, which is awesome because it's a nice huge glass print bed. We see this picture, which does look like this is an actual print off of this machine, which is very cool. You'll get some of the descriptions, like right here, they're showing you how easy it is to assemble. This machine, you just have to plug in a few connectors and put in these four base screws. They're showing off their couplers on their dual Z-axis. They're trying to show you here that you can use power loss resume. So if the machine loses power while it's printing, it'll be able to resume the print when you come back online. In my experience, anytime I've tried to use power loss recovery, by the time the print bed cools, the print has detached and you're better off to start over. There's also going to be some videos that show you how the machine runs. So this looks like a legitimate listing, which is really cool. So we'll scroll down a little bit further and we'll see that they're using their own main board that has an aluminum frame. We have a touchscreen interface, kind of round about what our print speeds are, what our layer heights can be. This is really cool. I don't often see this, the nozzle type listed. So that tells me when it's time to buy a new nozzle for this machine, we can use an E3D volcano style nozzle, which is cool because you can pump out a lot of filament pretty quick with those. So 
This is a really, really rock solid listing for this machine. After I've kind of got a ballpark price from the Amazon listing and the product description, I actually head over to the manufacturer websites. So sometimes we do see resellers on Amazon listing these machines and they're just listing off random specs that maybe don't directly apply. So that's part of what I'm looking for here on the manufacturer website. This is a really good breakdown of kind of a teardown for the hot end extruder combo. Um, tells us about the 32 bit main board. We see the glass print bed. This is all really cool stuff. So from this point, I have decided I like the machine. I like the price of the machine. I like the volume of the machine. So what's next? You need some filament. Most of these machines come with really itty bitty little sample spools. They're like 50 grams of some generic white PLA. And don't use it, it sucks. Buy, buy good 3D printer filament. So that way you have a full spool and you can get started with it. Now, most machines on the market today are going to be 1.75 millimeter. That is the actual diameter of the stick of filament or spool of filament. And that is going to be dependent on your machine. You need to know if it's going to fit through your extruder and your hot end. And pretty much everything outside of professional level or older machines at this point are going to be 1.75 millimeter. So as you're scrolling through and you're browsing the different filaments, definitely keep an eye out for that 1.75 millimeter. You're going to see a ton of brands and a ton of different things on Amazon when it comes to filament. One thing that I maintain when it comes to 3D printer filament, if the price is too good to be true, it is. Your kind of ballpark on an average spool of PLA, which is what most of us print with for most prints, is going to be between $19.99 and $25. That's going to get you in the door with some really quality stuff. Um, this here BB Life Silk Multicolor Filament is listed at $30 per kilogram. That is on the higher end, but this is also a specialty material. It is a rainbow transition and it's metallic. So you're actually going to have a little bit harder time printing with that metallic filament, especially starting out, than you are with a bog standard PLA. Now, personally, I've been using almost exclusively Polymaker for the last several months, and I love it. So if we do a quick search, a quick misspelled search for Polylite PLA, um, that's, that's what I would recommend is going with a spool of something like Polymaker or Hatchbox is really awesome, another really affordable brand. But we have a ton of colors to choose from here with Polymaker. Um, I personally prefer purchasing my Polymaker filament through their web store because their shipping is incredible and I get to work with their customer service if anything happens. Yeah. So those are some things to keep in mind. Basically, whatever you decide on for a printer, go ahead and add an additional $20 to $25 on the price because you're going to need to buy a spool of filament so that way you actually have materials on hand for starting out. Okay, so now that we are back up top, that is a little bit of what my machine buying process looks like. In addition to scrolling through the Amazon listing and the manufacturer websites, I also check out Reddit and I join the machine specific Facebook groups. These are a really good general indicator of what kind of common issues people are seeing with the machines. Now, Please keep in mind, as you look through these groups, you're going to see a whole lot more negative than you are positive. These groups are amazing troubleshooting resources, so more of the member base that's active is going to often post what their difficulties with the machine are, and it's not always going to be successful. Don't necessarily let that deter you from purchasing the machine if you've made up your mind and that's what you want. Those groups are there to help. The search function is your friend. It'll help you find maybe what you're looking for if you're working on an upgrade or if you're having an issue with maybe your bed mesh leveling isn't working just right. But don't feed into some of the toxicity. 
you're going to see a lot of negativity in those groups. You're going to see people negatively discussing other machines. Try to be positive, show off your makes, or engage in the dialogues in a friendly manner. So that way we can help make 3D printing more open and more accessible by showing the world that we are a friendly community full of people who just want to make cool stuff. If you have any questions or tips that you have for when you're shopping for a new 3D printer, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to reply to everyone. Thanks. Have a great day.